Okay, today's video is how to use quill pen and ink. Um, we're going to use quill pen and ink to shade our final drawings of our sports objects. Um, the way that you should set up on your table is you should have your table raised about six inches or so, and then you should have on the flat portion of your table a dry paper towel. You should keep your, um, your ink, this is your ink bottle, you should keep your ink bottle on top of the dry paper towel. You might wonder why. Why? Because the ink is permanent. And even though these paper towels are kind of like raincoat material, they will absorb spilled ink to a certain extent. Um, every semester, at least one student ruins one article of clothing with permanent ink because they're not set up properly. Imagine this. Your legs, you're sitting at your chair, your legs are underneath your desk, and you spill a bottle of permanent ink, and it's not on the paper towel. It's going to very quickly, before you have a chance to move, run on the tabletop and leak through your desk, right? So um, with being on this dry paper towel, the dry paper towel will absorb a lot of that ink. And in the meantime, you'll have a chance to kind of move, you know, from underneath the ink um, and therefore not spill it on yourself. There's two kinds of bottles. This one has a lid with um, a dispenser. We're not going to use the dispenser at this point in this project. Um, for some people that have tennis balls that want to do um, water down the ink and use a paintbrush to um, get light to dark, you can do that. But for this project, we can also use gray markers. It might be a little bit easier to control. Um, but truly, other than being permanent, this ink can be used as watercolor. Okay? Um, and there's so there's this kind, and then there's the kind with just a flat lid, but either way, you could just set it up like that. And here is the quill pen. Why do we bother learning how to use a quill pen? Why don't we just use Sharpie markers forever? Well, there are a couple benefits to using quill pen. The first benefit is line variation. So, this is called the pen, okay, and this is called the nib, N-I-B. The more I press down on the nib, the um, wider the line becomes. So, if I want my uh, object, in this case the sports object, really sensitively shaded, I can lightly graze the surface of my paper, like just barely touch it and get a really light line. If I want um, heavy lines or heavy marks, I can press harder. So the pressure actually gives you more variety. As we learned in the last project, line is and value are both elements of design. And so we can actually make our artwork look better with line variation. So watch this. Here's thick to thin. Oops. Okay. So you can really do a lot with it. Kind of cool. <coughs> How would you use How would you use this pen? How do I use it? How do I hold it? Oh, the other reason we use um, pen and ink or permanent ink is because it's truly permanent. Actually, Sharpie marker isn't. Over the years, it'll discolor. But this, um, we have drawings from the 1700s that still look like they were created yesterday. Um, because permanent ink was used. How do you hold it? 
So this is something everybody really has to do properly or they'll have difficulty making a mark with their quill pen. Um, this is, think of it like a scoop. The scoop has to be down and you want to drag it towards the palm of your hand. So make sure you dip it in the ink. And notice that the scoop is down. So I'm just going to get it a little close to the camera so you can see. See that scoop? It's facing down. Okay. So I'm going to show the class right now some examples of quill pen and ink from a couple of famous artists. And if you're not here today because you have lab, I would suggest that you look them up like you can Google search them. One is Ralph Steadman. And the other one we all know, Shell. Silverstein. Okay, thanks for watching.